Hello everyone, my name is Malik Eltrain. I'm the host of Health Awareness Talk. Tonight I have uh, a Reiki practitioner and also she does professional photography and also um, uh, makeup and stuff, Miss Dara Jewett. Hello Dara, how you doing? Hi, I'm good, how are you? Oh, just phenomenal, thank you. I've read a lot, uh, you are studying indigenous healing modalities, studying Reiki. Uh, why, why would you quit? Uh, everything that you was doing in the fashion industry and everything and give up your apartment and everything just to go around and just find out who you are as an individual? Um, it's been a lifelong process. It didn't happen overnight. Um, but it's something that from a very young child, I knew and I felt certain things. Um, spiritually, um, felt very connected with nature, with animals. And I always was looking for a way to help other people. I'm a natural empath, um, and an empath is somebody that basically feels what other people are feeling um, without them having to say a word. Um, so all my life, I've been very sensitive to vibrations and energies, and I knew that there was something more for me. Uh, I went through life like most people, you know, went to college. Um, after college, I decided to move to New York. I was actually born in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and wanted to explore more. Mm -hmm. So I didn't exactly know everything that I was moving towards, but I knew that I needed to make a change. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I moved to New York and really focused on photography and makeup and building that career. And while I was doing that, I was introduced actually to, and you may have seen it, but it's a movie called What the Bleep Do We Know? Mm -hmm. And it really dives into quantum physics. Mm -hmm. So that kind of sparked an interest in me to really, really get educated on different types of energies and vibrations. And, you know, I kept paying the bills through makeup and photography, mm -hmm. but... Through my studies, I then was introduced to other amazing healers. I found, um, of course, Deepak Chopra and Diane Virtue and a lot of other amazing healers um, that have written books. Star Wolf, she's actually a shamanic breathwork practic practitioner mm -hmm. who I've taken some classes with and such. Um, but it really came to a head about seven years ago. I re I received a what is called is a, uh, a soul uh, soul retrieval, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to think of the practitioner's name Elizabeth Clements, and she's in New York. Mm -hmm. And basically, what a soul retrieval is is I always knew that there was something missing, and I couldn't quite put my finger on it. And I came across the definition of a soul retrieval and I was like oh my gosh that sounds like exactly what I need and basically what it is is sometimes a soul and I do believe in reincarnation but a soul will go through very traumatic events whether it be in this life or in the last life and those events can be so traumatic that part of the soul actually breaks off and chooses not to return because it doesn't feel safe. Mm -hmm. And so what a soul retrieval is, is somebody usually helps to guide you through this process and asks those pieces and bits of your soul to please return back. Mm -hmm. And after I had this amazing session with Elizabeth Clements, my life changed forever. Like, mm -hmm. I literally started attracting different people into my life, attracting different work into my life, um, different opportunities and options um, just for self-growth and spiritual growth. And, of course, just read as many books as I could on spirituality, went to the New Life uh, conference mm -hmm. twice a year mm -hmm. that they have in New York. But they have them all over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... I just kind of got into different modalities. Um, I actually started um, with crystals because crystals are something that I was actually into since I was a young child. Probably the earliest memory I can remember is maybe like five or six, mm -hmm. um, going into the crystal caves and just being in awe and amazement. And I just felt this connection with them and I felt so much better mm -hmm. um, when I was with them. So I had a girlfriend who had a aunt who had a shop 
that I would always go into a crystal shop and I started my collection then. And I started actually doing tarot when I was about 11, 12 years old as well. Mm -hmm. And I was really into astrology my whole life. But, Mm -hmm. you know, society doesn't necessarily uh, accept these types of practices as normal. So I kind of suppressed it and kept it to myself Mm -hmm. until after the soul retrieval. I said, you know what, this feels right and it feels like who I am. So I just went with it. Mm-hmm. And then I met another healer at a bachelor party, actually, in New York. And mm-hmm. she um, is very, very talented. She does past life journeying. And through working with her, um, a lot of my dreams and such were validated that I've been a healer in many lives. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of like my destiny and my truth. So I really started to study chakras first. And I used the crystals to start doing chakra cleansings on myself and other people, Um, really just friends at first, because it did so much for me. And through balancing the chakras, um, basically, you can transform your life in many ways because each chakra is connected to different areas of your life. There are many, many different types, um, or many different chakras. I don't know if you really know too much about chakras, but it's basically um, energy that passes through the body, and there's these channels that the energy passes through. Mm-hmm. And so uh, there's many different many chakras, but there's seven main ones. And these are um, the crown, going to the third eye, all the way down to the root chakra. Um, but basically by balancing these out, it really helps to balance out your entire life Mm -hmm. and so after seeing how much success I had with myself and my friends Mm -hmm. and I started to do distance chakra Mm -hmm. healings for people that I just knew were having issues in their lives um, I would tune into them and as an empath I could just feel Mm -hmm. where there was dis-ease in their life Um, I would almost like get a stomach ache and you know I would know that that's the solar plexus or like I would not be able to speak very well and knew that they were having problem in their throat chakra for example Mm -hmm. Um, so I just would work with them that way and you know use the crystals and such and a lot of times I would only do tarot for myself Mm -hmm. or for those who are really close to me Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people think it's like witchcraft or something but it's not tarot to me is basically validation of what we already know Mm -hmm. but we don't necessarily want to accept or we sometimes need a picture in our face mm-hmm, to validate, mm-hmm. like, yes, this is what you're going through. This is true. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I would use all these different modalities to help heal. And then I came across Reiki. And it just seemed like such a perfect fit for everything that I had already been learning and, and using. And so I got my first Reiki attunement about a year and a half ago um, at Madison Wellness Center in New York. Mm-hmm. Uh, Um, And it was amazing. And I think the first shocking, I mean, I I believed in it, but the first shocking realization that this is really real Mm -hmm. was I had a leaky sink for years in my apartment. Mm -hmm. And the the maintenance would come and fix it and probably fix it like five different times through the 11 years I was there. But um, I gave it Reiki. Mm-hmm. And it stopped and it never started leaking again. Wow. Okay. Super. And it's, yeah, so it was like this physical that because he told me that he gave Reiki to a tire once and it stopped the flat tire. <laughs> and he was like, you know, I don't, it's not what it's for, but sometimes it's nice to see a physical validation you of something know. that you feel. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So something I could like see and tell other people, like, this really happened. Mm-hmm. Um, so then I started gaining clients uh, again through. You know, people I knew or else, um, word of mouth. Mm -hmm. And then I got my second attunement at Namaste Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about nine, ten months ago now. Um, And, you know, it just, the energy just gets stronger and stronger Mm -hmm. um, with each attunement. Um, And basically what Reiki is in a simplistic form is channeling the universal chi or energy life force Mm -hmm. um and so basically i'm like a conduit so Mm -hmm. i don't Mm -hmm. actually think about it i just um you know i i give respect Mm -hmm. 
and I start to activate it. Mm -hmm. And then it's basically like placing hands mm -hmm. on whoever I'm working with. Mm -hmm. And through that, the Reiki energy is channeled through my hands and given to whoever I'm working with. And I can do dis distance Reiki. Um, most of the time I do work right in the room with somebody. Mm -hmm. um, and not that I have to, but I, I love my crystals so much. I do incorporate them with a lot of my healings. And I also... Um, I work with uh, Young Living Oils. I'm a mm -hmm. distributor of that. And basically what that is is just natural organic oils that mm -hmm. help mm -hmm. with a lot of different things from holistic health, um, helps with stress management, and then a million different other things because they have a lot of different oils. Mm -hmm. But I'll use those with a diffuser because I like to have my clients have all their senses be awakened and comforted. So I'll usually use something very calming, like peace and calming, um, which is a beautiful oil or something like that. And then I'll have them put it on their hands and smell it as well mm -hmm. so that they can kind of get in that state of mind. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm doing the sessions, and most sessions last about an hour, mm -hmm. and I can actually attune uh, like a, a candle. So say somebody has cancer, mm -hmm. and I want you know to give them Reiki, every day for 10 hours a day is probably not conducive to my schedule or to theirs. Mm -hmm. But the more Reiki that this person can get, the more it's going to be able to help them. So I can actually attune a Reiki candle. And I do recommend burning it in uh, water just mm -hmm. for safety mm -hmm. standards mm -hmm. because you're going to be burning it 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. But by burning this candle, you're going to get Reiki 24 hours a day. Okay. It's absolutely amazing. Um, sorry, it's a little breezy here. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so it's just been something that's been so rewarding for myself because you can give Reiki to yourself and for other people. Um, I've helped people with back problems. I've helped people, um, I've helped someone get pregnant, mm -hmm. um, which was incredibly rewarding, um, with emotional issues. Um, it can be used to help mental issues it can be used for stress mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. it can actually even you know help with relationships and things like that and i'm very excited because i'll be getting my reiki three and master level reiki in about a month and a half in thailand wow that is so super why thailand um okay so now then going back to my whole journey so i've uh, I was a workaholic in New York, and I knew that by staying in New York, I couldn't fully dive into my truth and my path of spirituality. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I chose about four months ago to leave everything I knew, give up all of my clients, um, good money in New York, and embark out and travel the world to study with indigenous healers. There's lots of schools out there, and I very easily could have gone to a school with a set program of spirituality where, you know, I sit in a classroom and I listen to teachers who have done all these amazing things and worked with all these amaz amazing healers, and then they come to a classroom and teach us. But mm -hmm. I felt like I wanted to go out and seek and be somebody that could find the truth for herself. And I've always kind of been that way. I'm very independent like that. And mm -hmm. so... Mm -hmm. Um, I just got back from Peru and Ecuador. Um, but why Thailand? I've always been very drawn to it. And Reiki actually started in Japan. Um, but I just w have been emailing with some people. And I'm going to actually be going into Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, Malaysia, and Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And I I just really vibed out with somebody, this uh, healer that's in Thailand, and chose her to work with out of everyone. I just felt it was right. I listened to my gut. And Any chance we can get that person's name? or? Um, I can get it to you. Um, I don't have it written down right here because we've just been conversing via email, and so I don't know how she actually pronounces it because I don't speak Taiwanese. And so the, her name is in a different language. <laughs> so until I actually talk to her, I won't know how she pronounces it. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Does she have her own school that um, we can talk about? or? Um, she actually works at a healing institute on one of the islands. Okay. Hmm. So... 
very interesting. Now, tell us about your adventures in uh, Peru and Ecuador. Um, so, Ecuador, I went to the Galapagos Islands. Um, I believe that nature mm -hmm. is something that we need to preserve and respect. And I've always dreamed of going there, first of all, just because it's beautiful, but also to see a land where humans and animals can live in peace. Mm-hmm side by side and so I started in Ecuador and um, spent some time just pretty much detoxing mm -hmm, from New mm -hmm. York and society and learning about the island but then I decided to go to uh, Peru and I worked in the Sacred Valley um, with an amazing shaman his name was Javier mm -hmm. and we did some amazing deep spiritual soul work letting go of certain things and um, I got a lot of transmissions and I just started to meet other people I actually worked with a, a Kiro um, through a woman named Ashira and Akira is basically like a shaman um, of the Quechuan tribe and Quechuan are descendants of the Inca Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so we did a dispatcho ceremony, um, and that's basically where he puts all these blessings into a beautiful piece of art, actually. And he'll use different color powders, um, shells, um, different corn, things like that, to represent different aspects mm -hmm. of our life. Mm -hmm. And... You know, it's very ritualistic. It's amazing to watch. And I will actually, I'm putting together some videos. So it will be in my um, videos because I do have a lot of great footage of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then after all is said and done, um, he wraps it up. And then a little bit later that day, he burned it. Mm -hmm. And we went with him. And on that same day, I also got um, Mune Kai transmissions, which is basically a healing modality that comes from the lessons of the Inca. It doesn't actually come from the Inca, mm -hmm. um, but it comes out of the Amazon jungle, mm -hmm. and it comes from the same teachings mm -hmm. of the Inca. Okay. So that's basically using um, the Earth's energies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to heal. And it's just, and I think it's very similar in energy to Reiki, to be honest. And it's very interesting to see how many similarities there are between uh, Tibet and Peru. Um, Machu Picchu was an amazing experience. I probably was the longest staying person there that day. I got there, hiked up the mountain, and I was one of the first people there. And I literally stayed until the sun started setting. Um, that was so validating because my Quechuan shaman, or Kiro, he actually gave me um, a name called Rainbow Light. He, in his language is what he gave it to me, but that's what it means is Rainbow Light. And when I was at Machu Picchu, I actually was blessed with a double rainbow right mm -hmm. after I got down from hiking up Juana Picchu, which is the tallest wow. peak. It's the Young Mountain. Oh, that's super. It was, yeah, so validating that I was on the right path. Yeah, that's validating. How are you paying for all of this vacation thing? Are you just walking by faith or you just got some money stored back? I, like I said, I was a workaholic in New York. Yeah, okay. You're so fine. I literally worked seven days a week mm -hmm. for seven years and before that even longer. So I, I just worked like crazy and saved. Okay. I knew that I've always wanted to travel the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and I look at more as, as traveling, not vacationing. A vacation is somewhere you go and you totally de-stress. I mean, Galapagos was a little bit of a vacation, mm -hmm. um, but Peru definitely was not. It was an enlightened journey. Um, and it's, you know, I I stay in more modest um, accommodations. I don't eat a lot. Mm -hmm. And I've been blessed to be able to maneuver the internet pretty well mm -hmm. so I've been able to plan everything myself and I just search for the best deals on everything mm -hmm. um, 
and it's it's not as unattainable as one might think Mm -hmm. people go to these sites and they look at these like tours and they're like oh my god that's so expensive i could never do that well the first thing first is you just told yourself you could never do it Mm -hmm. and that's universal law what you speak is what comes into existence Mm -hmm. and so by you telling yourself that you can't do it well you can't um so you really have to believe in yourself first of all Mm -hmm. and where there's a will there's a way yes definitely and so you have to put action behind your dreams. And, you know, it's not easy. It's not like, you know, all this came overnight. I wanted this for a very long time. I worked hard and I saved up and I had a lot of obstacles that I had to overcome in this process as well. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I had to find the strength within myself. Okay, super. Dara. All right, we're going. To, uh, the very first thing you started off as being an empath. Uh, you started off with crystals and balancing people's chakras, correct? Yes. Okay. As you balance people's chakras, you notice that if their body was diseased or out of balance with each other, uh, it began to heal itself when you um, rebalanced all the chakras utilizing the crystals, right? Well, it does help. Yes. Um, basically, it help. First, we cleanse the chakras. Mm-hmm. I, you do like a body scan. Mm -hmm. And so you cleanse out the chakras and then balance them out. And this helps um, with healing the body, but it also helps from preventing other diseases to manifest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Basically, I I always say this to my clients, um, dis-ease, so having stress not being happy in your life, dis-ease Mm -hmm. in your life causes disease Mm -hmm. in your body because everything starts in your aura and manifests in. And that's including uh, like clinical obesity. You have noticed that when a person um, balances out their chakras that they are able to let go of the weight that just keeps coming back all the time? I do believe that it definitely helps because once you start to heal your chakras, you start to heal what is unhappy inside of you. Mm-hmm. And you're because a lot of times people are obe- obese because they're unhappy, they don't love themselves. A lot of people put on weight because they're actually trying to put on a mask, trying to put on a barrier to protect themselves. Um, A lot of times people are obese because honestly they just don't know. They're not educated Mm -hmm. and they haven't taken it upon themselves to learn yet. Mm -hmm. But definitely balancing your chakras and understanding what chakra is connected to what area in your life allows you to really focus on that, heal that from the inside out. And it really does show through and everything um but it's i do think with obesity it's a combination you have to be willing to understand first of all what your body needs because not i'm a vegetarian Mm -hmm. um and i feel amazing with it Mm -hmm. but i also tell there's a lot of people that are vegans and you know they just go full force and you know there's people that they can't live without you know their chicken or whatever and Mm -hmm. I think it's good to try to detox from it Mm -hmm. because sometimes we get addicted to foods that we don't even know Mm -hmm. that we're addicted to. It's not that our body needs it as much. But once you've detoxed from it, if your body's still craving something, that's because your body needs it. Mm -hmm. Uh, A lot of people don't listen to those things. And people just get so hung up on these artificial foods and sugars. And if you want sugar, go have a grape, go have a strawberry. They're amazing. But at the same step, if you have diabetes or you know hypoglycemia, having that on an empty stomach is not going to be good for you. So you mm-hmm. have to know your own body. Mm-hmm. You have to be willing to commit to your health. You have to love yourself enough to do the research, mm-hmm. to follow through, to read labels, or better yet, buy stuff that doesn't have a label on it. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. that's the healthiest for you, mm-hmm. um, but then also you must be active. Mm-hmm. You have to get exercise, and do you have to go to a gym? No, but you have to be active, and there's a million different ways to be active. Mm-hmm. Pick something that makes you happy. Exercise releases serotonin, which boosts y- how you feel about yourself. So. By exercising, not only is it good for your body, but it's also good for your soul. It's also going to help balance out your chakras because you're going to be feeling better and everything comes full circle. 
It's definitely. What does indigenous people mean? Oh, did you oh and. Indigenous, well, indigenous healers, indigenous people are basically people that still live off of the land in ancient type ways or follow more ancient type mentalities and lifestyles. Okay. So not really plugged in to the technology and, you know, they won't have a TV in their house. They'll mm -hmm. probably live in a, a mud shack. Uh, made with mud and maybe some wood possibly depending on where they live maybe not mm -hmm. straw I actually when I was in PSAC mm -hmm. I saw a family uh, or maybe they I don't I was assuming they were family but maybe they were friends literally build a house out of mud and straw wow they made the bricks they put it together with mud and you know Mm -hmm. Paste it all up, and it was amazing to watch that, and it literally happened before my eyes, and I had never seen anything like that in my life. Okay, so not only do uh, do um, not only do you use crystals in order to help to balance out your chakras, but you also utilize uh, Reiki to balance out the chakras as well. Correct. Well, I use the Reiki in itself, mm -hmm. so there are two. Uh, you know, I use them for two separate things. It depends on. Usually, I'll do a scan, and I'll see, you know, how their chakras are doing. If they're very, very dirty, and basically, um, like, they'll be kind of like a mucky color. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I, I am a very visual healer, and so I actually, I see colors. Um, when I do past life journeying, I see everything as if I was watching a movie screen. Not everyone feel, uh, sees like that. Some people feel. Some people see um, vibrations. Um, so first of all, I just want to make that differentiation that everyone, every healer is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And it's basically their connection to how they work with the energies. Um, but I actually will see. And so I'll see like a little bit of a mucky color. So first of all, I want to clean that out. And then after all the chakras are cleansed, then I send energy through all the chakras. And then after that, then I'll start the Reiki. Okay, that's super. Uh, what are these 12 laws you was talking about? Um, oh, well, basically, I everyone's probably very familiar with the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. And I knew that there had to be more universal laws than just the law of attraction you know in science class when i was younger i knew about the law of gravity so then there's you know there's got to be all these other laws and so i started doing research and i actually found a book um called the light shall set you free mm -hmm. and it was one of the most transformative books that i've ever read because it really really dived into the 12 uh, I mean, there are actually many different universal laws, some say, mm -hmm. um, but these, and I actually have it written down right over here, um, but these doctors speak of 12 specifically, um, and I do want to get their names for you because it is, they're so amazing, um, but... Everything just blew all over. Um, I'll get their names for you in just one second. But basically, the 12 laws, I'll go through them real quick. Um, and I can say a little bit about them if you want. Yes, um, I do. We all do. We have time? Okay. So the first one is divine oneness, um, which is basically we all live in a world, so everything's interconnected. A lot of people know the song One Love by Bob Marley um, and have heard people say that we're all connected and then a lot of people say no we're not you know we live over here they live over there and this this understanding of separatism is something that man has created but in reality everything in the universe at the very smallest essence of its being is energy so because if you break down an atom the smallest part of an atom is, you know, the, the nuclei, nucle, nucleide, mm -hmm. which is basically energy. So mm -hmm. everything's broken down. And so what affects one person is going to affect the rest of the world. So this divine oneness is the first uh, universal law. Mm -hmm. Then is vibration. So everything in the universe has a vibration. Thoughts, feelings, atoms, 
um, everything. And mm-hmm. sound travels on vibration, light travels on these different vibrations, and every vibration has its own unique uh, code, so to say. Mm-hmm. Um, science and nature and spirituality are actually very, very closely related if you really start to do your homework you see how many similarities there are and if you open your mind up and just look at it for what it is and not for what other people have taught you to believe it is Mm -hmm. as in it's separate if you believe in evolution you can't believe in god well who's to say god or whatever you want to call him, um, you know, Allah. I think God is the same God. He has many different names, but I believe that it's the universal energy force that created us all. And who's to say that this God didn't create science? There you go. So I, I personally believe that they're all connected. Mm-hmm. Um, but basically, so everything has vibration. Um, then the third is action. And so without action, nothing can happen. Mm -hmm. So it's taking the action with whatever it is that you desire to manifest Mm -hmm. and creating it. Because without taking that first step, it's always just going to be a dream. Mm -hmm. You have to take the first step. And with that first step, you'll get momentum and you'll just keep going. You can, talking about losing weight, you can want to lose weight all you want. Um, you can dream about it. You can cut out magazine pictures and put it on your fridge. Um, but if you don't actually take the steps, if you choose to buy the bag of chips versus the bag of apples, it's not going to happen. If you don't get off you know, the sofa and go out there and get some exercise, it's not going to happen. So you have to take action. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's also... The next one is, which is correspondence or the law of correspondence, which is basically connecting physics to spirituality, um, talking about everything does have um, a light vibration, emotion, um, as above, so below. And I'm sure that you've heard that term mm-hmm, before. Mm-hmm. And so the correspondence is just basically connecting um, the spiritual with the physical. Um, then the next one is uh, the law of cause and effect. And, of course, that's everything that has an action has a reaction. Um, Everything has a cause that will happen after it. Everything outside the universal laws, um, nothing can happen by chance. Mm -hmm. So the universal laws give that construct to this cause and effect issue. What we reap, we sow. Um, And so if you plant an apple tree you're going to get apples you're not going to get tomatoes Um, but also if you are good to people Mm -hmm. and help other people people are going to be good to you now there's also another law that I'll talk about a little bit um, later that kind of plays into that law a little bit Um, and actually I can uh Since I'm talking about it, I want to talk about it now, actually. Um, Okay, so a lot of people say, well, I'm a good person and I do good for other people. So why is it that bad things happen to me? Um, Well, basically, it is the law of relativity, which is in their book, the ninth law. But basically, it's that everybody has come down into embodiment every soul with a certain amount of tests that Mm -hmm. they have to achieve. And so even though you're a good person and you put out good vibrations and, you know, you try to follow, I reap what I sow, um, the law of relativity also says that you need to learn certain things while you're here. And so I'm going to give you tests. And if you don't pass these tests on the first time, I'm going to give you a harder test the next time. Mm -hmm. And if you fail it again, I'm going to give you a harder test and a harder test until you learn it because this is something that you were meant to do and put here for. Um, And so basically, the quicker you learn your tests, the easier it will be on you because the tests won't um, be as dramatic. Mm -hmm. Um, Then going back to the six laws, the law of um, compensation. So basically says that for when you do 
really apply yourself that you will be compensated. So if you, for example, plant seeds, you will be compensated with fruit to eat. Mm -hmm. If you work hard, you will be compensated with a paycheck. Mm -hmm. If you clean your house, you will be compensated with a clean environment to live in. Um, So it's a law of compensation. Seven is the law of attraction. It's been spoken about a million times, but, you know, to say it one more time, it's basically our thoughts and our feelings attract what our life is is created basically we manifest through our feelings our entire being and a lot of people have tried this and they say oh it doesn't work but the thing is is that you weren't really trying it it all it's all about your subconscious so if your conscious says okay this is going to work for me i'm going to attract um, a new love interest in my life and it's going to happen but if your subconscious doesn't truly believe that if subconsciously you're saying I really want to believe that that's going to happen but I don't really believe in this and so I just don't, I have these doubts and you know I don't really love myself and uh, so why would anybody else love me that is definitely going to play a role in what you attract in your life because what you attract is based on your subconscious feelings not what you vocally say Mm-hmm. It's your thoughts and your feelings towards these things. Um, the next is the perpetual transmi- um, transmission of energy. Basically talking about um, applying different vibrations and energy frequencies to affect change. So everyone in this world is possible and can affect change, but it really just depends on what energy and vibrations that you're putting out into the world. Mm -hmm. Um, We already talked about nine, which is relativity. Um, The law of polarity is 10, um, which basically everything is on a continuum. Everything has an opposite. Um, We can suppress it, but basically your mental vibrations is what will eventually manifest Mm -hmm. um then there's the law of rhythm everything vibrates and moves in the entire universe Mm -hmm. and everything has its own unique rhythm um of you know of course we know that music has a rhythm but everything has a rhythm crystals have a rhythm Mm -hmm. um light has a rhythm everything has a rhythm so when we're in harmony with it it works and when we're not in harmony with it things can be out of balance in our life Mm -hmm. and the 12th Um, universal law that they talk about is the law of gender um, which goes back to the yin and the yang yin being female yang being masculine and everything has yin and yang Mm -hmm. and this is something that uh, I think women have a little bit easier time Mm -hmm. uh, accepting or grasping this concept Mm -hmm. Um, but a soul is neutral Mm -hmm. and so in this life the soul might be feminine but in a past life it might have been masculine Mm -hmm. Um, and so each one of us could have been a man or a woman in a past life Mm -hmm. now typically it doesn't change that often so there won't be and and this is from the studies that I've read there typically won't be you know a man being a woman in the next life or a woman you know being the man in the next life but it definitely has happened and I I've been women in most of my past lives that I've journeyed into but I have been a man in one of them as well Mm -hmm. Uh, I was a healer and I was actually, I came into the vision when I was being hung Mm -hmm. for having been a healer. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that's another thing. A lot of healers, just to touch on briefly, a lot of healers in this life have been healers in past lives. Mm -hmm. We're blessed in this age that people are at, you know, as unforgiving as people are, they're a lot more forgiving than they have been in the past few centuries Mm -hmm. and so a lot of healers their subconscious body remembers a time when they were murdered literally Mm -hmm. for helping people they were burned at stakes they were hung um there was a lot of societal control and dictatorship Mm -hmm. and so if you heaven forbid said anything that maybe you know a religious institution or a governmental institution did not want you to say or did not want you to do Mm -hmm. you were 
killed and publicly and a lot of times painfully. And so this has played in Mm -hmm. big time to a lot of healers embracing their true path, I believe. I think a lot of people don't really want to go through that pain and that ridicule that their soul remembers. And so Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're a lot more cautious. I I definitely. Yeah, I definitely can accept that. The number twelve, the law of gender. How does that res- uh, how does that re- relate to homosexuality or a person being gay? Um, I'm not an expert on it. I totally believe that, and this is from scientifically um, speaking from papers that I've read. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I believe that honestly, people that are True, true gay. Mm-hmm. I, I believe now there are there is people that there are some people that might experiment a little bit, and you know I'm not one to judge. If if you're not sure, and there's a lot of different classifications, and I don't like labels. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I feel like labels are society's way of trying to put people in a box, mm-hmm. and I don't want to put people in a box because they're spiritual entities, their souls. Um, mm-hmm. But if we have to put people in a box, I believe gay people are born gay. Um, And I believe this because they've actually done studies where they've proven that a gay man sees dust more closely to what a woman sees than a straight man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, But it but it is something that I have thought about Mm -hmm. Um, just my own thinking, you know, could Mm -hmm. that person have been? the opposite sex in their previous life. Thank you. And that's why maybe in this life they feel so strongly attached to that. Um, But I I don't know as much um, just, you know, the gay society in general, more so the transgender Mm -hmm. society. Mm -hmm. Somebody that is so miserable with their self that they're willing to go procedure uh, that's very painful and very dangerous and costs a lot of money um, but someone who is willing to go through that extreme of a procedure there's something in their soul that they do not feel comfortable in their body mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and to me that screams they need to first of all I would I would just love to do experiments um, with people that would be open to getting soul retrievals mm-hmm. just to see if after a soul retrieval, if that helped at all, um, not to change you, but mm-hmm. just to make you not feel like you hate who you are and hate your body so much that you do anything to change it um, and to morph into something else. Um, but also the the fact that there is yin and yang and everything. Mm-hmm. It's interesting because I, personally, I think that there's kind of a sliding scale. Mm-hmm. Like a hundred percent straight is like a ten, and a hundred percent gay is like a one. But then I think a lot of people fall somewhere in between, and it's not right and it's not wrong. But I think maybe it has to do with this um, gender uh, law that basically some people are just a little bit more in tuned to certain aspects, and. Then again, like some people, you know, there's people that fall in love with like buildings. There's people that fall in love with uh, animals and trees. And I can't have an explanation for it because mm-hmm. I'm I'm not all knowing. Mm-hmm. But I do believe that through understanding where some of the things come from and accepting um, oneself that you can learn to deal with it yourself and hopefully society can learn to deal with it and just stop judging. Right. Uh, one of the interesting things about this, they have, um, they say it becomes a certain age where uh, the age of enlightenment, where people are more open to, or the frequency is actually increasing on the planet where more people become psychic and more attain to their higher selves and um, be able to access their past lives or kind of like aligning with each other just like the planets did. You ever heard about that? Oh, yes. Um, So basically, in a nutshell, the Age of Enlightenment is the Age of Aquarius. Mm -hmm. So 
just like um, the just like the year mm-hmm. has Aquarius, Pisces, Taurus, etc. Uh, there is also ages that can span for up to like five thousand years, mm-hmm. and we actually and it actually goes backwards. Mm-hmm. So we were just in the age of Pisces, Which is and Pisces is the age of the deity. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you notice. Um, on like if you've ever seen someone that um, is Christian and they have like the bumper sticker on the back of their car or you know if you are a Christian I you'll know. see that it's like the shape of a fish right and it's because it's the age of Pisces and the Pisces and Pisces is the age of the GT so that's why so many different amazing prophets were mm-hmm. sent to the earth because during this age man needed prophets mm-hmm. to tell them that they're connected to the universal God source. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And different prophets were sent down at Mm -hmm. different times in in different countries Mm -hmm. um, with the message of peace and love. Right. All of, pretty much all the religions, like at the core of their base, Mm -hmm. if you really research them, is peace and love. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, man's ego got in the way Mm-hmm. So, when this group that was taught from this deity came in contact with this group from another land that was taught from this deity, instead of saying, oh, you know, what do you believe in? Oh, peace and love. Oh, I believe in peace and love too. Oh, my God. Let's talk and become friends and, you know, learn about each other and, you know, we can be better. Mm-hmm. Instead of doing that, the ego got in the way. And people say money is the root of all evil. evil. I say the ego Mm -hmm. is the root of all evil because ego is what makes you want money. Ego is what makes you want power. Ego is what makes you want to dominate and to take over and to control and to not be open. It closes up the mind. And so basically that's why all the wars are happening is because people didn't take a second and say, hi, how are you? Let me learn about you. Instead, they said, oh, my God, you're different. Let me kill you. Aquarius. And so now we're going into the age of Aquarius. And we are in it now, and that's the age of enlightenment. What is that? And so basically, that's the knowing that I don't need to pray through a deity Mm -hmm. to connect with God. Okay. I can meditate and I can talk to God, will talk to me right through my meditations. I say prayer is when you talk to God, and meditation is when God talks to you. Yeah, that's absolutely true. So one of the things I hear about the age of Aquarius is that a lot of people are beginning to align and to associate with their past and also the future lives. And that's why you have some people that are reoccurring of psychics, empaths, mediums. I mean, we didn't have more people like this um, on the planet just about any time, just about as any time in the past thousands of years, you know? Well, yes, the age of Aquarius is also in direct correlation with, with awakening. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So the problem is, is the transitioning from going from Pisces to the Aquarius. A lot of people losing their uh, sense of identity, a uh, sense of I'm male, am I female, am I white, am I black, am I Jewish, or whatever like that. So they're kind of like in between. So a lot of, like, uh, I talk to uh, some of my um, friends. And um, they like, uh, you know, something they, they it's not that you that they like another man likes a man or woman likes a woman. It's more like they remember a time in their life where uh, they used to be one. Uh, they used to be a woman or a time in their life. They used to be a man and they identify more with that. And that's on the subconscious level. And it's coming from their subconscious into their conscious. And when they're able to identify with past life retrieval, um, they're able to become more comfortable with who they are in the present and can uh, move on from there. You know, and that's a lot of things. We've got a lot of people who are schizophrenic uh, that is going on right now with these multiple uh, personalities and things. And a lot of times with these people who are schizophrenic, crazy or whatever, it's not so much as that, again, that they are realigning with their selves at another uh, time, whether it be from the past or from uh, from the future, or and that goes on with the was it the law of correspondence that you was talking about? How we, how although we here have a physical body, we have a mind, we have a spirit, 
but we also have these things at uh, various times in the past and future as well. So what goes on in the time enlightenment or this switching over, so to speak, is that everybody is not grounded. A lot of people is not grounded, especially if they're more sensitive towards things, because you meet a lot of gay people or the great psychics. I mean, they are very, very intuitive. Okay. And the reason, or oh, they, they have some type of problems going on, people in general got some type of clinical obesity or whatever. And it's because they're not uh, got those pieces, those certain souls that are floating, those soul pieces that are floating around. They just need to be reestablished. They do not have a spiritual tradition or any type of uh, method in which to root them in the now to present in which they could go forward. So they just go with whatever that they feel at the time because they don't understand it's the transition and it's the this what we're actually going through from now uh from the age of pisces into the year time of aquarius is the time is everything is up because a lot of people just don't know what to do that's why it's so amazing with you dara that you should be able to quit uh which you quit the job in new york and be able to get up and go out in the world in order to study the indigenous people of the planet because the indigenous people are aware of this uprooting of this floating and stuff and they're teaching you the traditions that are, are needed in order to share with people who are unrooted in order that they can again realign with their past future selves or whatever energies that are out there in order for them to uh, find their true path in life Dara? Absolutely um there are and there are elders yes. uh, we have to humble ourselves um, a lot of people think indigenous people people that aren't as and for lack of a better word um, what society would term them as you know socialized um, mm -hmm. that they're they're not as good they don't know as much they don't have our you know western medicine and whatnot um, but they've been getting along just fine for thousands and thousands of years. And if we can humble ourselves and and subdue our ego, we can learn a lot from these people. And so they true. want to tell us. They just want to do it in a safe way. And they want to do it with people that truly respect and honor what they are teaching. Mm-hmm. That is absolutely positively um, true. And I think that's also another reason, Dara, that you may be on the show today is to remind people is that the ancient wisdoms and stuff that we got um, is just not here in uh, television and it's not here in, you know, the Internet and things that we have to go back to the roots. The people who started it all and just like you say, uh, I, hey, uh, what's really going on? What's really the find the people who are just shut off or cut off from the matrix cut off from the system people who are connected directly to the source and hear what is directly going on because what happens a lot of times is that technology as we know it electricity and blase all this other type of stuff it comes and it goes but pure spirituality pure source is that what goes on forever and these people out there these indigenous people they really know what time it is and they're not giving you the fake thing and they're not giving they do something that they live on a daily basis they know that it's not about the money it's not about the fame it's not about the ego and putting myself over everybody like they live in mud huts you know they accept the law of nature being one and they, they say hey it their inner riches is about them what's inside themselves not what's outside themselves you know and being able to share that for the people and you know coming from new york and being who you are it says a lot for you to be able to go and serve under these people and i'm sure out there with people listening and with people actually watch the video i said man if daryl can do that and you know being a, a fashion person and all that other type stuff man you know uh maybe i need to take a look at this as well so i really appreciate you being on the show and sharing it that with us well, thank you. I hope that I spark some inspiration and some other people to follow their truth, too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, especially about studying Reiki and uh, from somebody in uh, Thailand. I wouldn't have never thought of that. 
<laughs> I mean, I could get the attunement in New York like I got my other attunements. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I'm not saying that it's bad to do that um, because as soon as I get my master level attunement, I will come back to the States and attune other people here. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with getting it done in your own backyard. But if you feel you have a calling to step outside of your backyard, then please do it because travel changes your life and opens you up to a world without understanding what somebody else is going through. You can't put yourself and your problems into relative terms, going back to the law of relativity. You think your problems are bad because your lights just got shut off? Well, someone's house just got bombed and they're the only survivor. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. really, I understand the lights are important, but burn a candle, okay? And count your blessings because you're still alive. People forget that the greatest blessing is to be alive. Mm -hmm. You are here to live. So start living. Mm -hmm. Don't just don't just exist. Yeah, that is definitely so. That's definitely true. Dara, we only got five minutes left on the show. Is there anything um, that you would like to say? Um, basically, just start understanding that making a difference in the world doesn't always have to be this grand thing either. Like, I understand I'm doing this huge thing, and a lot of people say, oh, that's great for her, but, you know, I don't have any desire to that. I have, you know, a husband or a wife and kids, and I love my job, and this and this and that, and, you know, I don't, I don't feel the need to do all that. That's fine. You don't have to, but there are things that you can do on a day-to-day -day basis, even in your comfort zone. You don't have to change a whole lot, such as, you know, send somebody a smile, mm -hmm. um, hold the door open for somebody, um, volunteer at a local food shelf. Um, in New York, there's an amazing organization I volunteered with for years called New York Cares, literally it is so flexible and you can do anything from plant a garden if you don't like to work with people. You can work with senior citizens, senior citizens, animals, um, kids. You can do anything. You can help people with their taxes, um, homework. But basically, get outside of yourself. The more you do things for other people and help them, the more you're really going to help yourself and you're going to feel better about yourself and grow. And... Honestly, the biggest thing in this world that I pray for is peace and love. And I might sound like a hippie or a pacifist, as my father calls me. Mm -hmm. um, and so be it if, you know, you want to label me. But I do believe in peace and love. And I believe that if we all take steps together every single day, and they can be small steps, but if we all take steps together towards this, we will change the world. We can live in a peaceful world society that's definitely that's true and uh you said if you found somebody who was transgender you'd be interested in working with this soul retrieval pro process i i really want to do i just want to do i, w I would like to work with a couple people um, because obviously you work with one person and it could be just that one person that it worked for so i would love to put together some kind of a study um just to help people Love. I, I, I want people to love themselves. Um, loving other people and loving the world really starts with loving yourself. And so I think that if we can prove, and transgender would be an easy way to prove, if we could prove that through like soul retrieval and soul work, somebody who literally hated themselves so much that they, and I don't even want to say hated themselves, but just felt so uncomfortable mm -hmm. in their body that they were willing to do anything. If they were able to then all of a sudden be comfortable in their body, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it would give a lot of validation to this. I mean, it changed my life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's a whole nother story and segment or whatever. But it really, really is something that I would love to put validity to. Wow. And we got your information going across the ticker at this time. Right, Robert? No, we're already done. Okay. All right. This is uh, Health Awareness Talk, and this is Malik L. Um, everyone out there, please have a nice night, and thank you, Dara. Thank you. Peace and love. Peace and love. Could you hold on a few minutes? Of course. All right. Thank you.